Children came out, episode four. Obviously, guys, spoilers if you if you're watching the show and haven't seen this episode. Be but, prepared. Uh, Be prepared this for is some. The first episode without Logan Roy, without Brian Cox in the role. Obviously, we had a shocking episode at Connor's wedding with uh, Logan uh, dying suddenly on the plane, and this episode's basically the aftermath. Um, the next day, yeah, and not a funeral yet, but it's kind of just like. Uh, everyone getting together at Logan's house and kind of, you know, it's kind of like a borderline wake, I would say they're having there, um, and just regrouping after such a traumatic event. Yeah, all and, everybody coming together, all yeah. the important people. And I think what's interesting about this episode is you see the effect already of him not being there in the sense that all the characters suddenly aren't scared anymore. Like Frank, Carl, yeah, scared, guys who scared would have been... for different reasons, and I think it's it is it's funny because in one episode Logan does say to uh, Kendall, I think mm-hmm. it is, um, that he's uh, Kendall's like it's not a big dick contest. Yes, We've talked in the about first this before, episode, yeah. and Logan's like sometimes it is. Yeah, and so you kind of this is one of those moments where you see like look at mine, look at mine, yeah. look how big mine is. Well, exactly. Now you everyone's know? on the same plane there, and right. you got you see guys like Frank and Carl who. If Logan was in the room, they'd sit back and just like not say anything. Now they're yeah. they're on the attack. Do you want to dive? In? So I, I put yeah. the pictures Let's get that into you it. Put in. I put them in yeah. order. Right off the bat, we start yep. off with uh, Kendall hasn't slept. Yep, freak of nature. Right, sitting in the corner. With, you know what I mean? And then he, yeah, Roman's just brushing the teeth. But then we got this. Yeah. So this was the opening. This was a shocker. So Shiv gets a phone call from her doctor about test results, and then it comes out at the end that she's pregnant. About what five months? Yeah, something or so like that. about that. She she's got to go in for a five month exam, twenty week, twenty exam. week. Yeah. Um, do we know? Do we know if this is pre or post breakup with Tommy Boy? Well, it would have to be. I don't know. Cause, all right. So in the end of season three, when they're in Italy, is when Tom is talking to her about having kids, and they yes. they joke about freezing. Well, Remember yeah, that? because Tom was saying uh, the they're saying that I would go away for about nine months. Yes, so it's yes, just like yes. an incubation period, basically, right. and she freaks out. And then at the end of that season is when obviously Tom betrays her. Mm. So I don't know. That's a good question because then when we pick back up in this season at the beginning, they've been estranged. So right. you got to wonder but for how long though? Do we know? I, I don't know. A few months at least have passed, I think, between seasons. Sure. But so, on their freaking wedding night, Shiv said to Tom, at the very last episode of season one is their wedding. Yeah. And on their wedding night, she was like, I don't know if I'm qualified to be in a in a monogamous yes. marriage. Right. So well, she yeah, sleeps we around. We know that she sleeps around. It, it's interesting. She obviously hasn't told Tom yet. She hasn't um, told as, anybody yet. Yeah, she hasn't told anybody. I mean, you could speculate all you want about who the father is. Uh, I'd probably bet money it's Tom still. I think the timing could work out. We obviously don't know how much time was in between, but um, but maybe not. Maybe that's why she's scared to tell him. Maybe she does think it's someone else. Where, where do you land on this? I... The crazy part is that this is like the day after the dad died. Yeah. So there's like so much shit hitting the fan all at once. Yep. I mean, a pregnancy, regardless of the timing, is news. Like yeah. it's it's a you're bringing another life potentially into the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and then, but if you couple that with like your dad dying, I think it'll be a boy. I think they're gonna name it Logan if we see that at okay. all. Um, I feel like that would be suitable but it also might be like too cliche i don't know yeah. regardless it'll, of all it'll that be like stuff, when rob stark was gonna have a kid and name it ned and then he got killed right after right yeah. right 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 um i increasingly dislike shiv as oh, as yeah. the but and Especially listen they're all episode. they're all narcissistic they all suck all right mm-hmm. everybody when i say i don't like shiv i don't like any of them really yeah. i only liked logan and now he's dead right um but now it's it's one of those things and i only say that because not like he was so nice but i feel like i understood him a little bit and he wasn't he wasn't logan was not as like sneaky and conniving he didn't flip-flop as everyone no, he you was, always knew where he yes, stood. Yes. You know, it's all business yeah. all the time. Very easy to read. And uh you always knew what you got with him. But it's not this this chess match thing that everybody always has going on. And now that she doesn't tell anybody, of course, because that would like put her at, you know, right. whatever. And so they go to the the party with this next picture yeah. here, where Matson calls Roman mm-hmm. and he doesn't pick up the call. Yep. And they talk about it at first. Right. And I knew right when they said it, like they're gonna call him back, he's not gonna answer. 
Uh, yeah. Which happened. Yeah. So the Oscar yeah. guy answers the phone. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, this was a weird scene for me. Was it weird for you? The phone call? Like, like the for, fact that Manson was like, yeah, yeah, rough one. Not him, but his assistant, whatever that was on the phone, was like, yeah. I think he's he's playing. He knows he has leverage now, and I think now that Logan's dead, and these he knows that. Yeah, the but like, kids the no are, respect for like someone's father dying. Yeah, I, he, I, he said he's like, so yeah, that's a real rough one for you guys. Can you send somebody out in twenty four hours to finalize this yeah, deal? Because he wants it to be done as soon as possible. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want it to be delayed. He said, you know, we found that out in the episode before. He doesn't want them to ask for more money. He's just all business right now. Yeah. You know? No, I know. I, listen, I, I don't really business, think he was still... fond of any of them, even Logan. You know what I'm saying? Sure. He was kind of doing it strictly from a business standpoint. I did find it interesting, I'm not going to lie, that he called Roman. Well, I think he's got the closest relationship apart from Logan with Roman. But it's a business deal. Right, so but like, he hadn't talked to Kendall and Shiv. Before. I'm not even talking about Kendall and Shiv. He yeah. didn't call Frank. He didn't call Jerry. He didn't call anybody at the yeah, corporate remember in, lawyer. Remember Hugo. in Italy or Switzerland when when Logan and Roman went to meet with him that first time. Yeah, it was just them two. You I know? hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. It's just funny because we're talking about like who's in line next. You know, like right. where's the show gonna go? So it is. It is kind of cool. Like this is the biggest deal so far in mm-hmm. the show. I would say. And I think you know, there's that scene. Uh, when they go to the bathroom together, Matson and Roman, and they piss on the the app on their phone. He th- like so they've they've interacted yeah. with each other and had a yeah. Th- they somewhat like each other. I Moderately think. homosexual. Yes, yeah. sure. But um, Not no, it's interesting. So the Matson thing keeps lingering. I think, and I saw in the preview for next episode, we're, we're finally going to see him in person, um, which we've been waiting for. But yeah, this goes on. We get some funny scenes, obviously back and forths. Let's talk about... Um, well, this is important right after this phone call. Yes. This uh, is huge. Hugo. So as Kendall is walking in to go meet with everybody, so they, yep. they all kind of decide they're going to meet at Logan's house. As he's walking in, Hugo is downstairs on the phone saying to somebody on the phone, you really fucked me in the yes. ass, you know? You put a strap on and you... <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Kendall hears this. Yeah. Um, and then later after the phone call with uh, Oscar, it's revealed that uh, Hugo who apparently doesn't have that great of a relationship with his daughter anyway, right. decided to call her anyway before the news broke about yes. uh, Logan's passing. And the little insider trading. And the little insider trading. She sold some stock. And now, listen, I'm not a business guy. Like, I know what insider trading is, but I wonder why did he feel the need to tell Kendall this? Because he can go to jail? Oh, he's but done. what would Kendall do? What do you, well, so what do you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so obviously the daughter sold the stock and, and because of the information that the father gave, right? But why would he tell Kendall? Um, that's what I'm wondering. So I think it's, does he think Kendall has power to, yeah, I mean, Hugo's claiming that he didn't. To, right when he asks him, "Did you make a call to her that day?" He says, he says like, I "No don't re- comment." He said, yeah, no, he says, I, "I don't recall." recall. Yes, right. Yeah. So I think he's he's looking for like some support, maybe. Yeah, but also some help. I mean, I think Kendall. Uh, listen, regardless of of uh, the official titles, like mm-hmm. it's not like Kendall doesn't have any pull. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can cover things up. He can you know press buttons and have people do mm-hmm. things. And Hugo can't. He's just a lawyer. Like, he's not a bigwig at the company. Yeah. He's just a lawyer. And so he has done something that, like, if you do that, I mean, he could be recommended for being disbarred. He could yeah. be, like, it's it's jail time. It is jail time. It's right. a big, big, big deal. And I think that he kind of goes to Kendall because he's a little bit of a guilty conscience. He kind of mm-hmm. has to get something off his chest. And it's also, yeah. like, a plea for, can you please help me? And now Kendall, obviously, when we see at the end of that but episode, it's the, uses the it second blackmail. he said it to him, I went, you fucking moron. Right, right. Because it's blackmail. Yeah, oh, like, 100%. It's, and it's good blackmail, too. It is very good blackmail. It's not like, oh, you're fired. It's like, yeah. you're fired and your life's over. But, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll circle back to that when we talk about the end of the episode. Sure. So then kind of in the middle of this, again, you had some people speaking about Logan. Uh, people that didn't even really weren't that close with him, which they talk about in the after the episode. But I think the biggest thing that, happens well actually let's talk we about have another picture yeah let's that. talk about greg and tom they pro- oh, they yeah. have a pretty minor role in this episode specifically i've seen a lot of stuff on twitter complaining about greg this season he's definitely taken a back seat and a lot of people have been saying that he's kind of just this annoying guy now 
Um, he's always I, been this annoying. I still guy. find him funny. Like, I think he's I, hilarious. But he definitely hasn't been as prominent. But I think that's on purpose because with Logan's death and everything, it's really been about the kids so yeah. far this season, which I think it should be. Yeah. But I think Greg's role will continue to 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 go up. Obviously, how funny was it the scene when they're talking about? Um, so oh, so it's found. There is a piece of paper found the in will. Logan's safe. It's yeah. not a will. It's, it's like an addendum. It's not the oh, will. Oh, okay. No, it's an un. It's a signed, undated, like sheet that probably at some point was gonna go to a lawyer to be officially officiated into the official official yes. thing. Yes. So it's unofficial, but it is Logan's. Yep. Okay. He did write it. And Greg's name is written on there with a question mark. And it's everything's in pencil. Yeah. And uh, some of it's typed. And it says, paragraph three uh, on mm-hmm. there, it, it says that uh, Kendall is to take over. Now, it assumes that the paper it, that's ty- the, the typed portion of the paper was done about four years ago, which Probably we put us season th- one. Season one. Yes. Um, prior to. Mm-hmm. The first, very first episode yes, is when this was made. But we haven't seen it since. Mm-hmm. And Kendall's name is... is there starts is a, as an underline. There's a line. It starts as an underline. But we don't know if it's an underline or a cross out, which I, Shiv brings up. Yeah. But Greg's name is also written on there. And I thought that was... So th- this whole thing about the paper, mm-hmm. for me, it was moderately annoying. And then also for me, there were some of the funniest moments in this episode had to do with this piece of paper. Yes. So the conversation with... Frank and uh, Carl and yep. Jerry. The yes, that would be a funny joke. Best line, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And then I actually really liked Greg's sense of humor when he said, "Because I mean, he he's trying because we're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Greg, right? So he's trying to stay relevant." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, 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 the first time I watched it, I literally laughed out loud with Frank when Frank was laughing after Greg says, "So then." A natural conclusion would be that I'm I'm number two right. in line, or I'd be his number two. And I was like, "You I idiot! Wait, I was but, like, you goofball!" But let's what are you talk about that. For, what do you yeah. think that meant? I think Greg's a moron. What do you mean? Why did he write Greg question <laughs> mark? Roman says it's probably just to see if he can remember your name, which I think is funny. Um, I, I honestly, but we've talked about that. We think that there was a chance that Greg. Sure, could, I mean, if you think about it, right? Look, nobody ever. And, I, you know, I don't, I'm moderately superstitious, so yeah. I don't want to jinx anything, obviously. But, like, you know, you don't know when you're going to go. Yeah. Even if, like, it's a horrible cancer diagnosis, they give you an estimate. They yeah, don't, yeah, no yeah. one ever gives you the date. This is the date you're going to go. Right. So, I mean, who knows? If Logan, Logan in season one, when yeah. he takes that, uh, takes it off the table for Kendall mm-hmm. and says, I might be around another five, ten years. Yeah. Well, he was only around for four. Right. But, like, what if he had been around for ten? You're telling me that in ten years Greg wouldn't be ready? I think he would. Well, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I don't see why not. And I, think, I feel like ten years of Greg's learning under Logan would have done him some real good. Right. Because I think if you look if you look at all the players right yep. now, the kids, to me, at the time of Logan's death were kind of dead to him. Right? Other than Roman, maybe. Sure. Tom, who may have had a chance before, but if he's divorces Shiv, then you lose the familial connection. Yep. Greg has the unless, familial connection. Unless there's a child involved. Right. <laughs> but I'm trying to think pre-Logan's oh, death, sure, right? Oh, sure, sure, sure. So, but then you look at Greg, you say he has the familial connection, though it's kind of loose. And I think it's so important when we look back in the fact that he chose Logan over his uncle. I think that was a big moment for Greg because it was a risky moment. He lost out of the will from the uncle. And he said, I'm committing to Logan and what I have at this company. And I think Logan respected that. Sure. And sure. I, th- you know, I think, I think it's Logan's the little pretty, things. He was pretty big on loyalty. And-, and I think, though, he appreciates, you know, he talks lecturing the kids all the time that he gave them everything. And mm. Greg, although he did get the job there because of nepotism, he has worked his way up through a lot of maneuvering. He has learned. To an extent, but it's not like he started off as the COO or no, something. No, no. He got, like... Not even a management job. I don't think he's he's Tom's peon. Right. So I think that Logan's definitely takes into account those little things that he sees there. I, that's all I'm thinking. Right. You know, I don't necessarily think that Greg will succeed now that Logan's dead. I think there was a bigger chance when Logan was alive. I, I'm wondering though now, looking at that will, right? The hmm. what? Do, where do you land? Was it crossed out or was it underlined? Um, I think it was both. I think it was done intentionally. 
I think Logan did it so this exact situation would happen and everyone would be fucking confused. Right? Yeah, bro. I did. I, yeah. Because I'm starting to look back at this whole series and wonder if this whole series is about Kendall somehow turning into Logan because of he was how shitty of a father he was. So, well, like, Logan unintentionally, by being a bad dad, made him what he said he needs to be, like a killer. Well, so right? as I was going to say, I've watched a lot of videos, and so I'm probably referencing, like, three different videos I've seen. Yeah. But, um, the, the, you know, the one thing that he says at the end of season two mm-hmm. uh, to Kendall before he sends him on his way. Yeah, and on Ken- the boat. Yeah, and Kendall is, when he leaves, he's, uh, like, he's on his way to go to jail, essentially. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to take responsibility. Yeah. And he does, and he throws Logan under the bus, which Logan is probably just like the, one of the proudest moments for Logan yeah. in his life. But he says to him, he says, you're not a killer, and you, right. you need to be a killer. And I think that the death of his father and seeing all of the chaos and the, the – it's one of those like things where you don't know what you have until it's gone. Mm-hmm. And the idea that in this very moment, the Carl, Jerry, and – um and uh, Frank yep. could literally just ruin their whatever. Like the show yeah. would be like be, be done based right. on what they say. Um, I actually was happy with um, Stewie in this episode. Mm-hmm. I thought he, now it's yeah, obviously he to his own benefit. Yes. Like there's going to be something happening there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Frank even calls him out. He goes, what? So you can pop a mat, pop a yeah, right. too. But um, I think that it was a cool, it's a cool move, even if it's to his own benefit. Even if there's some backhanded and he thing, him, you know, hugging him and stuff. He showed They're some friends. actual, right? But this is business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, there's got to be something more in it for Stewie. I don't think that I think Stewie understands that he definitely is not ever going to be any sort of puppet master for Frank, yeah. Carl, or Jerry. No, you know, hundred percent. But well, let's talk about where this episode kind of leaves off. So Roman and Kendall are voted by the entire board co CEOs. Shiv throws a hissy fit. Ugh, I mean, we yeah. could go on and on about Shiv just being really entitled and thinking she has claim to this when really she's done the least work out of any of them. Yeah, but she's a brat. I think that was probably a smart move. I think Kendall and Roman do make a good team. But then, obviously, the PR team, Hugo and who was the other girl? Uh, something with an A. Carolina. 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 They come and they're like... I love Carolina. I yeah, fucking she wants Carolina. to do the press about Logan. They have to. Put some bad things out, maybe. About well, his is well to make the trans. So, th- at the end of the last episode, Connor's wedding, when uh, when uh, Roman says, "Look, there's Dad," and it, he shows his phone. And yeah, the, the stock, stock went price down. dropping, yep. and it's because when there's uncertainty at the top, your money's not safe, especially yeah. if you're just a regular. And they investor. want to lessen the importance Logan had, and right, yes. and Roman and Kendall, at least at first, Roman and Kendall are both like, "Yeah, we don't need to shit on Dad." Right. We don't want to sit like put out a bunch of bad press about that. I think the reality, though, is that um, if done the right way, it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I don't think you have to shit on Logan to say that like it's very obvious the guy was eighty four, eighty five years old, whatever yeah. it was, and so like the you know average or the the age of uh, retiring in America at least is sixty five. Yeah. So you get another twenty years, fifteen twenty years out of somebody. Mm-hmm. Last ten. Maybe it wouldn't even surprise me if I was an investor to yeah. have it be that like he was grooming his kids to become CEO, like yeah. getting them ready to, to take over for him and that they were making more decisions and he was giving them more power. And mm-hmm. I think that they are still so controlled by it. It's almost like they think that he's going to come out of the back and go, I didn't tell you you could do anything. Yeah. Because it's the day after he died. So they're still kind of in that mode of that. Mm-hmm. And they're still keeping, you know, like last episode you said, the day. Every episode is a day yeah. so far. It's still literally the next that. day. Yeah, cool. Logan hasn't been dead yeah. 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's, for Roman at least, is where he kind of pushes back and is like, yo, like let's not just rattle off the yeah. shit about my dad. He's not even in the ground yet. Mm-hmm. You and know? this is where Kendall's frustrating me because it's like, all right, nice. You and Roman are co-CEOs. You guys make a good team together. And then he goes behind his back mm-hmm. at the end of the episode. Yeah, because I, I didn't buy it first. I don't buy anything in the show. Right. I don't buy anything in the show. Yeah. Like, th- like uh, I loved, first of all, can we talk a little bit? And I know we bounce around a lot, yeah. I, but there's a lot that happens. We were following, mm-hmm. like, ten main characters. Yeah. Um, even though it's really about the kids. The other ones have, like, substantial. Marsha came back. That's one yeah. of the places I wanted to go. But Jerry 
is back. I told you at the, when we did our podcast last yeah. week that Jerry's still be, still in. She's and yes, everybody knows, and it's going to be awkward. Yeah. It was, mm-hmm. but she's back, and she there's nothing in writing. Right. And Roman season one wouldn't have said shit, and Roman called her out in that in that meeting. Well, there was something in writing, but Tom deleted it. He had the emails. Remember, he told Greg on the phone on the plane. He's like, "Delete." Is that the, what what that was? I believe so. Interesting. I, maybe unless it's something else that'll be revealed later. But I think that Logan had sent him the, his unofficial plans moving forward, which included firing Jer- Jerry. Yeah, I mean, I think the, I was just impressed with Roman, who is has been very submissive, even on like a sexual level, whatever, mm-hmm. with Jerry. They have a very bizarre relationship. Yes, um, but like. And then for him to be like, yeah, but this is really serious. You're not taking my company from me. Sorry, you're out kind of deal. Yeah. You know, like, we'll we'll keep you in. You're right. Logan was sour on you. I'm not. Yeah. But you're not going to take my job. Yeah. That was kind of mm-hmm. kind of dope on, on uh, Roman's part, I would say, you know? And I'm also surprised at how Roman's been handling Logan Seth. Obviously, again, it's the day after, but the way he said, like, he pre-grieved Makes a lot of sense because if you look back at this that whole season, he's always very sensitive about the topic of Logan dying. So yeah, it's he's... definitely something that's been in his head for for years. Oh, it's bullshit, dude. He yeah. hasn't pre grieved. I think he's saying that because he's either in denial or yeah, he, it's we're we're talking about twenty four hours. We watch it yeah. over the course of a week, but we're talking about twenty four hours later. He hasn't had time to process shit. Mm-hmm. And by the way. This billion dollar comp multi billion dollar company is about to fall out from underneath you. Yeah, you don't have time. Right. He's not going to sit there and think of his dad. Mm-hmm. So what did you think of uh, Marsha coming back? So this is where I wanted to. Yeah. This is a good spot, I feel yeah. like, to, to wrap it all up on. So um, after Kendall, uh, here's Hugo yelling at, apparently it turns out to be his daughter. Yeah. He goes upstairs, first person who's there. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Oh my God! Yep, Marsha's back. Yes, and um, I knew I there was a part of me that was like, "How long until Marsha's back?" I know she I thought, always comes back. She, it could have been a, a cool way to end the series too, like just as like a cliffhanger, like "Look who's back," and that way you never know if in like twenty yeah. years they're gonna come back with some shit. But no, she's back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Episode four, she's back. Carries out. Yep, carries out. Wasn't even a lot upstairs. Thought that was interesting. Um. It could be potentially they were saying something about the sexual relationship between Carrie and Logan, mm-hmm. and I think it would be a twist slash interesting if Carrie's pregnant or if there's something there. That would be interesting. Um, Marsha sells Logan's New York penthouse apartment, yep, for sixty three million dollars on a spit handshake to Connor. Yes. Uh. Right there, the t- less than twenty four hours yeah. after their, after the death, um, what did you think? Go off for a minute about well, I th- Marsha. I think where does this go she from? She somehow always finds her way back, despite all this. And she, I think, we've seen since season one that she knows how to play the game. Mm. Um, but I wonder what's her end goal. I'm not sure of, because obviously she does. I mean, they never were never her and Logan were never officially divorced. They've kept that PR outside that they were still somewhat together. She claims that they talked every night, right? You know, um, intimately. Yeah. <laughs> so, what what do you think she wants out of this? Uh, I think she wants his voting shares. Um, yeah. Which was what was supposed to happen at the end of episode one, season right. one. Yep. And and the son too. She got him like a position. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I really don't think she has any personal connection to anyone there. I think she's ready to go fuck you all, you know, in terms... It's all about her. Of course it's all yeah. about her. I just wonder what is all about her. Is yeah. it business? Is it... I mean, she's about to get $63 million. Yeah, right. Right off the bat. I mean, yeah. for me, that would be enough. I'd shut up after that. Yeah. What'd you, you know? think What'd you think of her handling of the carry? Sick, <sighs> it was sick rude. Words. It was. It was rude. I mean, I think that... Listen, at some point, right? Like, you're not... And I think after a certain age as well, like... Marsha and Logan were not married for love. No. I don't believe that they were for a second. No. She was the wife that was of the right... I'm not saying this is correct. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is not my view. I'm saying for Logan, he needed someone that like... Like, in public, Carrie looks like Logan's assistant. 
Right. Because she's so much younger. Mm-hmm. But they were in love. I believe that Carrie loved Yeah, she Logan. clearly was. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't think, Lo- yeah, I think yeah. Logan would never show that to anybody. But mm-hmm. I don't believe, I didn't believe that ever that Marsha and Logan yeah. were like this lovey-dovey old couple. Mm-hmm. She's there to be the old female face to his old male face so that they look yeah. right Yeah, in it, public. it's the PR thing, yeah. Right. Um, and so... I knew that from the beginning. I've always thought she was conniving. We all we always thought that in in the earlier seasons that she was going to be the one that destroyed everything. I mean, she might be, and well, and now she's back. Yeah, and that was the biggest. I think it, it was almost a bigger shock to see her. I felt more like of that fear kind of yeah. like ooh than when Logan was dying. Yeah, because I didn't even when Logan's dying, I didn't even think about Marsha. Like I thought about Reaper. Logan. Yeah, she was just oh, and it's like she's just there. Yep. And I went, oh shit, this is not going to be good. And, um, yeah, I thought it was rude, the the, the handling yeah. of the Carrie situation. And I don't, I really don't like that the bodyguards listened to Marsha. Yeah. They were the ones who were like, oh, I yeah, know. put her out the back. And then I thought it was nice that Roman kind of jumps in and was like. Yeah, yeah. Roman, she was Because they all there, know, yeah. like, one, you're not our mom, right? Yeah. You're not our mom. And then, two, like, Carrie's been around and you haven't been, like. I, I was weirded out by that. Like, I didn't know why the bodyguards listen. Because in my opinion, right, they should be listening to Roman and Kendall and yeah, yeah, yeah. all them. Like, who, what, what, what is Mar- like, what? Mm. You know? I don't yeah. know. It was a weird moment. And then they had the dogs coming in and sniffing everything because yeah. the president or the... I don't know. It's a weird situation. So, but before we leave off, yeah, let's talk about that tweet I sent you the other day about the one shot where Shiv... It's bullshit. Looks out the into the hallway. Yep. Greg enters. They make eye talk on c- contact, and she like just turns her head away. What what did that mean? So she's staring at Tom. So right before that, yeah, like thirty seconds before that little clip. This is why it's bullshit. Because yeah. I I started rewatching the episode the second you tweeted that or yeah. you sent me that tweet. Because I was like, oh, did I miss? Th-? Like that seems like ridiculous. Yeah. But it's totally taken out of context. Out of context. Yeah. So when they're all going into that room. Right, um, and I think it's right before the scene with the where she says, "Oh, dude, some of the sarcasm in this show yeah. is so good." When Jerry says to Tom, "She's like, oh, oh, you're filled with filled with grief oh, yeah, and sadness. Yeah, yeah. Watch out, because you're getting your melancholy everywhere while he's eating the hors d'oeuvre." Yeah. So good, man. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right before that kind of scene, or when they're uh, no, it was um, I th- is it Frank or Carl? Someone makes a speech, and then Tom is it's like, "Not, it's neither of them. It's that other random guy." Right. Yeah. So it's right before that scene because that's where they're going. Mm-hmm. They're all heading into the hear that hear those words about Logan, and um, Tom walks in and looks at Shiv, and Shiv looks away, and then looks back when Tom looks away. Yes. And Greg's eyes meet Shiv's eyes. Yeah. As she's looking back at Tom, and then she looks ar- away right away. And I personally believe it's because she knows that it's essentially like looking at, looking at the same person. Yeah. Whatever the- she does. Greg's going to walk in the other room, one mm. of the disgusting boys. Yes. He's going to walk in the other room and go, Tom Shiv was looking at you while you were... Like, you know, oh, it's like, yeah, a, it's yeah, a yeah. childish type thing. The implication with the tweet was that Greg might be the father of the kid. And I was Gross. like, what no, is I don't, going yeah, I don't, on? I don't think it. It's just fun to play with the idea, you know? I know. All it right, so very end of the... Ep- very, very last scene of the episode. Yep. Kendall walks up to Hugo mm-hmm. and says, let's talk shit about dad, basically. Yeah. And I can do, you have to listen to me because I have the blackmail on you. He says, unless you want me to take out the strap on. Yes. You know. Great line. Yeah, it's fantastic, fantastically done. And it's unbeknownst to Roman. Yes. So in closing of this episode, Mm -hmm. where do we go from here? It's a good question. What's And at this point, right? Fuck the season. What happens on Sunday? (laughs) Well, they're they're obviously going to meet with Matson, I think. I, I don't think that this decision that Kendall makes at the end of the episode is going to ruin him and Roman's relationship. I think they'll have a scuffle about it. And, it, you know, Roman saying that's not the right move. But I think from uh, Kendall's perspective, I think it probably was the right business move. Right. So, and I think that'll eventually get across to Roman. So I don't think it's going to have as huge implications between the, their relationship as one might think, but maybe. So... Really quick, mm-hmm. we we've seen throughout this season, yeah, because of the way that season three ended, we've seen now this uh, camaraderie finally between yeah. the three kids, where they've normally been at each other's throats. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing to me, anyway, is that the second a piece of paper came out that said Kendall's name, 
Shiv is the one initially to say underlined or crossed out. Like they're immediately yeah. against each other. And then she's always like, oh, I don't mean like I don't support you, but like, right. fucking awful. Which yeah. is, it was really bad because it's like, Shiv, what you're saying right now is is not going to help you. It's going right. to help these other people. Like, exactly. It's, like, yeah. I, like, keep, wouldn't at you very rather least have keep your brother it in the there? family. Yeah. It, worst case scenario, wouldn't you at least keep it in the family? Yeah. So whatever, that's one thing. But I guess this is why I just feel like they're so all three of them are so bratty. Like they're mm-hmm. just so pathetic that like if the slightest thing rubs them the wrong way, their whole worlds fall apart. Yeah. Which makes me concerned about the way that Roman would react to something like this. It mm-hmm. may screw everything. Listen, is is Kendall acting in the killer way that his father would want him to? Yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that Roman has no say? Nope, because no. now they're both co-CEOs. Yeah. So like what does that mean? Interim too. So yeah, but fuck, but come yeah. on! It's this is why they didn't want Jerry to be interim CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you're interim, it still means you're there. Yeah, the time frame is arbitrary. And if you do a good job, you might stay there too. That's the point. Yeah. So like they 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 are they're in a significant they've they've succeeded in a significant power play, I would say. Yeah. But they could fuck themselves because Kendall went behind Roman's back. I mean, that's been the story of this whole show, right? Dude, oh, yeah. it's so crazy. I don't think at this point, at this point, mm. <laughs> of course, it's whatever you don't think is what's going to yeah. happen. But I don't see Greg being CEO at this point. No, I don't either. Um, I don't, especially with Logan's death and everything else, I don't see it being Tom. Um, I mean, listen, this this whole, this show started with Kendall, Kendall. Kendall in the car, you know, d- listen to the music in his headphones, so... After this episode, I feel like every episode we're going to have a different opinion on who's going to do it. But after this episode, I'm starting to wonder if maybe this whole show really was about Kendall turning into his father. You it, know? W- it wouldn't surprise me. No. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean... I, it's going to be interesting. And I don't even know if I would be upset. I don't, I don't either. If, I don't even know if I would be upset. I feel like they've had their biggest moment. Yeah. It's the death you know, I think it came at the right time. I'm not upset about it. It's I mean, not listen, Game it, of Thrones. It's We're like not Game of Thrones, though. Seriously, whoever you put on the Iron Throne, you're going to have some people who don't like it. You're going to have people who like it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But there was so much tension leading up to Logan's death that it was incredible every week. I'm... I'm yeah. Everything now is just a bonus. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, that's, I'm, it is like an epilogue. Yeah. I'm very happy with this show. I am, too. And well, I, hopefully I they, be cool. they finish strong. We'll see, guys. We'll be back next week to review episode five. Before we leave today, we get a question of the day. We do. We have a fan question. Fan RJ. question. A video big submitted. Viewer. Yeah, video. big, big viewer. Um, which let's is it's it. it's sad because you know Matt's away on, in Dublin. He wasn't here for the big viewer. Yeah. But let's take a look at this fan. Oh, oh, look at this. looks familiar. What's going on, movie mob? Uh, Matt from Paris. Hey, you see right there. Um, fan question today. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm in Paris. The city of sex, some might say. <laughs> so I got a sexy question for two sexy guys. Um, my question is, what is your guy's favorite movie or TV relationship? Mine is John and Egret in Game of Thrones. Um, wow. Would love to know your thoughts. No surprise um, there. Go Boston. I love it, dude. It's a good question. He's such, I, yeah. I love it. And we say, he said it to us last, uh, last week. He said, I'll submit a question. For yes, he did. And- he, he came through. He did. I, I was. I didn't know if he would come through or not, but he totally came through. Yeah, thank That's you. That's so Matt. cool, dude. Thank I hope, you. Listen, Maddie boy. I hope you're having fun, man. I really do. It's, it's so cool. He's in fucking Paris, bro. dangerous place right now. Uh, Belly, <laughs> you know. But uh, good Everybody's question. Beating each other up with baguettes over there. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, you know, when I think a a good love uh relationship, your in, favorite in, in movies and stuff, I always think of the love theme, the score. And when I, you know what I'm thinking, I'm thinking like Anakin and Padme across the stars, like that beautiful song. Interesting. I'm thinking Michael and Apollon- uh, Apollonia. Apollonia, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, wow, that that's a good music. One. Do you know what I'm saying? Like sure. the music is key to me. Okay. I'm gonna go with an interesting one here. <laughs> okay. Because I don't think most people would say it, but I'm going Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan from Pirates: The First Three Trilogy. Orlando wow. Bloom and Cara Knightley. Wow. And a lot of that does have to do with the theme. I do love their love theme. That's, I'm they going. Good, they that. have a good love story. Yeah, can you guess mine? Um, I want to say Michael and Apollonia, but I feel like that's so short lived. It is very short lived. It's a great. That's a great love story. Um, Which is your favorite couple? Is that your pick? No. Is it a movie or a TV show? TV show. TV show. Christopher and and Aunt- close Tony and Carmela. 
Really? Love them. Really? And it's, it's There's a scene. It's actually Edie Falco. She said in an interview it's yeah. her favorite scene, but there's is when they're sitting out by the pool and they're not, there's not even any real like lines or anything, yeah. but they just love each other, you mm-hmm. know? And um, they're, obviously if you've seen the Sopranos, like he's insane. Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. yelling, he's a cheater, he's crazy. And he mm-hmm. does all these different things. And she's just always there. She's always right. there and it's real. It's a real love. They've known each other since they were like 12 or whatever it is. And uh, I just, and they're modern. I like the Apollonia thing from a movie. It, for a movie, I would say Michael and Apollonia, and right. for a TV show, I would say Tony and Carmela. And I just That's really fair. love them. Yeah. Forget the mafia crap. I just mean on a couple yeah. relationship level. No, it's a good, and obviously it's a show, so their relationship was spanned out of all yeah. those seasons. I, I really don't like uh, Adriana and. and uh, oh yeah, it's definitely a toxic. Chris. That's toxic as fuck. It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Not great. You know, yeah. um, but, it realistic but horrible. Yeah. But no. Great question, Matt. Great Thank question. You for sending it really, big really fan good of the question. Show. Big fan of the show. Big fan, show. big fan. City of Sex. Enjoy. Yeah. Perry. Don't be silly, kid. Wrap yeah. your willy. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for watching, guys. As always, the Movie Mob podcast drops every Friday at 6 p.m. We got sidelined with Matt Sampson on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. And then Movie Roulette on Mondays at 12 p.m., guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you want a question answered like that good fan right there, Put it down below. We'll answer it next week for you. Matt will be back in studio. May have some more guests coming in. We'll see what happens, guys. Until then, it's going to be a big summer. How you doing?